Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to a very special episode of Outside the Studio. I'm so honored here today to have Dan Murfield join me on the show. Dan is a renowned healer and mentor. He channels the power of nature to help his clients heal and recover from stress. His teachings, which can be found in his new book, Seedling, which I'm holding up if you're watching online, uh, Seedling, subtitle, The Journey to Inner Peace, fuses ancient wisdom with modern times to help us navigate and overcome even the most challenging moments by listening to our intuition, staying grounded, and being aligned and centered, all while reacting from a place of love rather than fear, which I feel like I could underscore that point. A bunch of times because I feel like that is the key to to be able to pause and react from a place of love rather than fear is really the key to this. I feel like the success in this kind of work. Um, and so, Dan, how are you doing today? Thank you so much for being here. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Um, well, thank you. Good, good. Um, okay, well, let's start off. So, first of all, I was curious about the cover because I thought this was such a beautiful design and again if you're if you're uh, listening to the podcast I'll definitely share links to the YouTube channel so you can see what I'm talking about but this is like beautiful multicolored eye it looks like an eye to me um with this kind of cool sw swirly line in the middle I don't know if it has a significance to you or if you designed it sometimes authors do sometimes they don't just curious so so the book was um uh, channeled and I, I I went through stages of seeing repeated messages and one message was is we never can see the eyes we can never see the world through other people's eyes it's always through the individual and when we look at the individual our eyes are always unique to our purpose so and uh, I for a while I kept seeing people's eyes and, I, and they're all different and they're all unique and they're all individual so when we look at the world we have to look at it through a a, a collective space of love, but it's through your own eyes. It is through not not through the lens of someone else's eyes or programming or kind of this uh, narrative which is formed when potentially when you're young and when you've grown up knowing that this is your beliefs and this is how you. Look. When we look at healing, we always look at the the individual and the lens of how we feel within that world, how we see that point. And the, that circle in the middle—that's that's the golden that's the golden circle. So that golden compass. So it, that means that our lives are unique. Our our purpose, our our presence on this planet, it is always down to the individual and always down to how they feel within that moment. So when we come to areas of like judgment and kind of this narrative, we can never truly understand other people's lives. But, but by looking at it through our own, lenses of our own eyes, we get to see the true meaning of how we feel and bring respect to the table across both parties. Mm, yeah. Oh, so, okay, you're bringing up an interesting point in terms of um, not really being able to step into someone else's shoes, per se, but to rather maybe have empathy and imagine what their experience must be like, and actually to listen with an open heart and mind. And I think this is such a great practice. Um, and I think oftentimes we get so caught up in reacting to how we feel, emotional triggers, our own narrative, that we forget to pause long enough to listen from that lens um and you know like from a lens of love rather from a, from a lens of fear um so I was wondering if you would say more about any practices that you would suggest if somebody's like okay I want to really try to implement this into my life this concept into my life where would I start well em empowerment one of the first stages of empowerment is by uh responsibility and accountability so when we look out to the world, uh, it's the internal registration of how we feel is means that we can hold we can hold a space of respect, love, empathy, kindness. Because when you when you hold yourself accountable and when you when you kind of dig deep and listen to what what's actually the calling inside, the the world opens up and the way that people act, you start to you start to go well. 
I'm not I'm not going to judge that person within this moment because I don't know the story, but I can look at them as an individual. I hold myself to these standards, and within these standards, I, I know that with any principles in life, there has to be a balance of respect. So uh, the accountability and um, responsibility for your own individual journey brings this harmonic kind of balance in between all spaces, between all conversations. And and that's all that's all that's required when we look at the core principles of the planet. So the planet's uniquely balanced throughout. Every individual aspect of it is unique. But when we look at a collective, they all, all respects every other aspect. So when we look at nature and how it grows, all the plants support each other, but they're individual, but collectively they're bigger. When we look at animals and the circle of life, once again, they have their unique characteristics, but collectively they create a foundation that supports the world. And this is what this is what kind of like the we miss sometimes when we're when we're looking at healing. We always try and um we, we get too stuck on other people's energies and kind of how they feel. And we stop, we forget to look inside. And it's inside is where we tr- we know our true powers our state of kind of our, our identity and, and our identity a lot of times is hidden from us and the uh, the identity is is what sets us free it is that choice within that moment that we can do that right thing how do you i so you bring up a good point of okay there's this let's say we're listening to someone and they're triggering us by what they're saying maybe we disagree with what they're saying or maybe it's like we have so much empathy that the line between my individual self and their individual self starts to blur and we we forget um to draw a boundary if it's needed so how do we stay present listen uh and also protect ourselves um if we need to be protected um, and also, do you know what I mean? I'm having a hard time articulating this question, but I feel like it's such a, you're, you're speaking to it, but I wonder if you could give me, uh, an example of like a conversation where, or a relationship where oftentimes the space between you and I, and I think you, you, you speak to this in, in the chapter on, on balance chapter four, um, in terms of like our relationships with one another and how those lines get really messy. Um, and so it's, it's this, I guess it's a bigger concept, a bigger theme around being present with others, having empathy with others, and also making sure our needs get met and their needs get met. <laughs> Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, absolutely. And and that's, that's what, that's what makes your identity because you're, 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 you're holding, you're not, you're not. Um, so, we categorize everything that we do. And by categorizing the situation, we put people in bubbles we in the same same corner, and then we don't look at them as individuals. So when we, like you say, we're talking about uh, talking, you could have every, everybody at the table could be different. But when we categorize it, oh, well, that's table A, means that you remove every single identity on that table because it's too easy to form an opinion that that's table A, you know? But when we look at it, you, you could have, you could have 10 people all with different backgrounds, all with different uh, lifestyles and all with different cultures that they've been brought up with. So when we look at these spaces, we're reading the energies and it's it's a foundational principle of nature that when we read the energies, we actually draw on this um, internal kind of uh, communication of what energy is theirs, what energy is ours. And and that boundary between both of them is, is, is a, an unconditional space. So when you know, when you, especially on healing, you soon, you soon find that, that you're, you might be actively entering stages that are charging your emotions and then becoming some part of somebody else's reality. They're part, part of their storm. And, and that's where, that's where we really hinder our growth because we're not separating those boundaries. So I, I would, I, the first one I'd say is breathing. Breathing is a good indication that you can bring your awareness inside and, and ask how you feel because there's uh, the, the the big indication with breathing is that we can we can digest the difference between feelings and emotions. Mm-hmm. So when we walk into a place of work or socializing or even or even your partner, say you're married and uh, you spend a lot of time together, you could potentially be thinking 
that this is your this is this is how you feel but it could be 100% your partner's energy and so there's no there's no balancing difference between those principles and it's the it's the individual that makes you stronger so individually when you know yourselves collectively you are strong and the difference between feelings and emotions emotions is that we have gifts we we see we hear we smell we touch we feel and we've been programmed to use those to addictive states so as we kind of as we walk through life we'll we'll see something and we'll go buy it or we'll smell something and we'll go eat junk food or we'll we'll hear something and we'll and we'll shut down a conversation and we're using all our emotions to shut down uh, shut down our natural abilities but as we walk into the energies of a conversation if we're shutting down our gifts we're not able to register what is ours and what is theirs we're limiting our way of how we think and how we how we act within the world. So when when we when we work on ourselves and we work on our feelings, we are activating how we feel. We're acting our senses. Yeah, you know, we're seeing uh, we're seeing more of the conversation. We're hearing and not limiting to what we what we kind of uh, our uh, our tunnel vision is allowing us to hear. And when you start listening to the whole of conversation, you can start to digest their energy and and your energy. And as you and a lot of the times you don't realize until you've left. But when you've left the conversation and you realize, oh, that was my energy being put onto them, or that was their energy being put onto me, and I didn't create that space to to welcome that unconditional empathy and love and kindness, and and that's where we get lost in this this entanglement of emotionally charged population that's willing to judge, but not hold a space for the individual. Yeah. Wow. What an interesting, I've never actually heard anyone speak to the difference between feelings and emotions. So that's a great indicator for me. It's so helpful. I feel like that's something that's so tangible that I could practice. So thank you. That was going to be my next question. What is the difference between emotion and feelings? <laughs> um, So, okay, I wanted to back up a little bit and ask you, because you said at the beginning, um, this information, this book was channeled to you. So I wanted to ask you to um, expound upon that a little bit. If you had an experience um, where this came to you, um, what was that like, if you wouldn't mind sharing? Absolutely, absolutely. And I, um, I I got shut down at a very early age because it was not normal. So I, I went through a lot of my teens and 20s not being able to embrace this part of me. Um, and I, I when, when I say they're chatting in my ear all the time, it's they're chatting in my ear all the time, It's but I'm allowing them to chat. That's my, part of my empowerment. I can expand my consciousness to a different place. And and it's not just down to me. Everybody has this capability. But it's just, in it's like I said, it's down to the unique individual characteristics of the person. That's that's their journey, their, their principles. So... When when I see it, I can see it in images. I can hear them, like all the clear sentience and all that. Like I I pretty much have the wider range of how I can how I can receive the information. Um, the journey itself, it was uh, the the channeling was easy uh, because that's a natural flow for me. The the actual time bit was the uh, getting the translation right. And when you look through the book. The, the book is it's kind of written in a way where if you're not in the right place, you will get tired when reading it. It needs to kind of be in really this grounded place that allows you this self-care, self-awareness, and this core principles of life with your identity. So um, the, the channeling process, um, I pretty much didn't switch off for about six months. I was um, I would get up, uh, I'd have my daily routine, I'd create spaces, but I was, uh, I was, I was, I was just in the zone of being able to channel the important information whenever. So, so I'd be out in a supermarket, and then I'll have to write a bit of note down on my phone, or I might, I might be driving, and a song might pop on, and then some words might pop in the back of my head, or I, um, I, I might be sitting. At one of my meditational states are I sit into nature and I just watch. I don't close my eyes. I just, I just let, I just let the world happen around me. And I could see pictures and images, and it's it was just um, it was just being present, being aware, and um, allowing what they wanted to tell me to come through, and uh, and for me to pass on that message. Mm. So 
Interesting. Do people ever ask you uh, for tips um, or suggestions about how to get into flow or channel states? So the point of the release, so so it's the same as a meditational state. Uh, people have, have approached me before, and it's always down to the visual, the point that they're willing to release. So uh, we look to ground and release two states of consciousness. We 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 want to put ourselves to a higher place, um, and that is down to the willingness of the free will and the choice of letting go. So the more you are willing to let yourself let go, the more you are likely to receive messages or open your consciousness to to be receiving messages mm -hmm. um and, and it, there's, there's nothing much complicated about it it's just the the respect within your routines your your places the spaces that you put yourself in the people around you because if you're putting yourself in emotionally charged spaces all the time it's not allowing you the space to even enter that state of meditation so you you may say oh i really want to channel and i really want to go down this direction but if the energy around you is is stopping you and halting you you, you you may find that you're actually sabotaging your reality before you even enter that stage. So it's 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 about self awareness, self love, and kindness. And and the most natural form we can have is nature. If you spend a couple of days in nature, without without even creating or forming narratives or uh, or keeping your mind busy, like we 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 um, if the efficiency to avoid, we won't we'll never be able to do it. We just have to. It's, we always have to look inwards. We always have to place ourselves in that ca that caring, loving state, and then ask, then welcome it. You know. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. uh, I definitely, I I definitely understand that state, and and nature is my the easiest, um, most accessible way for me to feel that sense of connection and um, that sense of individuality, but part of the collective, like. The, I am the wave in the ocean and we're all individual waves in, in the collective ocean. Um, I was curious, I, I've read a little bit about you and your childhood growing up, was it England and the countryside and always feeling like you had this connection to animals and nature from, from a young age. Um, and then I think I heard you just say that it got shut down when you were around 12. Uh, a bit before that, I would say probably eight. Okay. Uh, um, so just as I was into my teens, um, and and back in those days, the, the they had this rigid, rigid kind of um, platform where this is this is what you should do, this is the direction you go. So if, as soon as you brought your feelings and emotions to the tables, people didn't want to hear about it. Life was too hard, and that was not down. Uh, and when I look back now, and I've gone through my process, and I've I gained the ability to go back and look at events real time in one of my states of med well a few of my states of meditation over the last couple of years and when i go back and look at the situation i looked at that situation only needed empathy uh for that individual who was trying to shut me down but at the time it just it it, it felt like my world is ripping being ripped from me because i was you know they call you all these names and all these situations and um that that's how we remove people's identities especially as a child when we absorb all these energies and we're more ripe into that reality we have this kind of playful characteristics within nature um I, my, my um my mom she loved horses and she would always uh go out and uh buy horses and we had we had uh geese we had uh we had an aviary we had dogs we had cats we had goats we had um we, we had a, a, it was like a hobby farm kind of thing and um that there would always be this case where my mom would go and she'd bring a bird back and within Every time she brought a bird back, it would always it would always like sit with me, and I'd, I'd do it, and then and then my mom would give it away to my nan because I because it was so well tamed that it would it would go, and you don't realize at the moment in time you just made this bond with this animal, and all of a sudden it's been given away, and then the same with the goats, they they would do it, same with the geese, they would do it, and it was every time I went to make a connection, and they became tame, that they they were gone, and you don't realize that effect. That, that, do you know what I mean? That you, you you're, you're then creating these principles that you don't you can't build relationships because every time you build a relationship, it disappears, and that 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 was part of my natural kind of direction being taken away. And it was it was their their foresight or their action was for the bigger purpose, and was to say, well, it was going to my nan; she needed a bird and stuff like that. But for for the energy that I put into it. 
it wasn't it wasn't that kind of, uh, it wasn't seen the same way was it so that's that's where it, that's where these slowly kind of procedures where they slowly rip rip away your kind of what they do to you 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 end up with this situation where you you, you just become someone you're not and you hide away from these these relationships and these principles and these values in life do you think it's important to be able to heal especially childhood wounds to really have to um be able to go back and experience that that particular trauma in order to heal from it yeah yeah and and, and that's one thing about the book um we 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 leave our childhood and we 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 try and forget about it. we do we push it deep down inside of us whereas healing comes on every stage every level uh, every experience and um the especially the spiritual community they've gone from one state of avoidance which has been locked up within their own minds because they've been conditioned this way to to awakening where they see the world from a different point of view and then they go from that awakening to a state of high consciousness and avoiding the bit in the middle and that's where we get these kind of situations where if you look out to the world and you you listen to the spiritual community, it can be the most hostile and judgmental parts of the world because they're, they're feeling so much pain and they don't know how to process it. And you can totally understand that once you've gone, once you've been locked up and you you go back and see your actions and your thoughts and the situations that you put yourself in, there's all this guilt and this remorse just leaking through into your life and you're going, Oh, I don't want to feel that way again. And then they go to this higher state of consciousness and avoid their embodiment. And that's that's one kind of message I want to put out to the world. It's it's okay to heal. The book itself, there's processes inside where we look at the whole of you, we look at your identity, and we look at how we can learn from the past and make you stronger. And by making you stronger, uh, every moment that you put yourself in, you don't potentially have a trigger that is going to control the way that you react at later stage, and and this healing starts from and it doesn't even it doesn't even begin when you were born. It actually begins with your parents and the energy is called stamp of their mental reality when you were created within your embodiment. So you potentially could be carrying these emotions within your embodiment, not knowing what they are, and they could be the actual the the actual realities of your parents when you were created. It. and this is this is how we this is how we evolved to this kind of advanced state of inner peace because we're we're actually stopping a generational curse and we're creating a foundations for future generations to really embrace their purpose and their and and the core principles of life mm-hmm. i when i hear you say that i think of the term epigenetics is that what you're referring to in terms of it's like inherited trauma that we're not really aware of um, passed down from ancestors or our parents. Yeah, yeah. So that their lives, every we we know more about. For example, your mom and dad. You know more about your mom than your dad knows about you, uh, than your mom knows about your dad, and and vice versa, because they're part of you. Their energies are part of our existence. So when we when we go into their worlds, we can access a part of their their kind of their, their memory, the energy of their memories better than the actual partner can. And then imagine imagine two individuals that have created created this life and then everything that they do or did controls the way that this new individual works. And that's not that's not what life's about. Life's about identifying your parents and having your own individual journey and that's where that's where we we our conditioning or our motives around the world because it's all kind of like emotionally charged and it suits a purpose or suits a narrative mm-hmm. we 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 fail to identify simple principles within, within how we acknowledge the, the, the freedom of um the free uh, the freedom of the freedom of the space that we offer when 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 they're a young child or in the, or born or growing up and stuff like that yeah i find that so <laughs> I've always been aware of, um, at least for, for my immediate, uh, family, um, trauma, especially on my dad's side that was passed down from his mother. So my grandmother, and I I mean, like some of my earliest memories of just like supercharged emotion from my dad based on his childhood, based on what happened to his mother. Um, and I find myself struggling with that in adulthood, even though my dad and I have talked about it 
at length. And it was never a secret. It was always something that was, my dad's been an open book about that his whole life. Um, I think in an effort to not pass that on to me, but I feel so emotionally uh, charged when I'm around him. And I think he feels emotionally charged when he's around me. I think we trigger each other in that way. Um, so it's interesting to think about, okay, there's an, this emotion coming up when I'm in relationship with my dad, he's in relationship with me. Um, it's his trauma. It's his mother's trauma. And we're both aware of it. And we still don't seem to be able to heal from it. Either of us, it feels like, if that makes sense. Um, and so, and it's, it's for me, like I have this immense amount of empathy and compassion for what he went through as a child. And it seems like he does too, for his, for his own little childhood self. And so I'm wondering what we're missing there. What do you think? Memories are not always what they seem. What you, 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 you might believe there's a, there's a positive energy between them being on a memory, but you only have to look at your memories from a couple of years ago and, and then relate back and go, well, I felt it was good at the time, but when I look back now, it wasn't really that good. So we, we never presume that those energies, that our memories are actually positive. That's the first step. We have to kind of digest how, because we might never be able to go back. It was I was I, I had felt such a privilege to be able to go back in my own life, and there was obviously a meaning behind me being able to go back to be able to to be able to tell the story here today and and spread the word we become what we put our energy into so if you try so hard to become something else you're not you become that aspect and you, you can see that through generations you can see in the world today that a lot of people struggling to identify and they're becoming exactly what their parents tried not to become so when you you're when your dad was potentially trying not to do this but inside he was he, he had lost the ability to identify he then ended up doing that reversal effect and then passing it on to you and and, and i'm not categorizing or that this is nothing this is just this is just a, a an example of what could happen it's not 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 the the direct reason but our energies and our memories are never, never always what they seem so within your childhood and within your experiences we create this defensive barrier of how to survive and how to survive sometimes we, we might we might means that we might laugh at difficult situations and you might look back and go, Oh, I, laugh, I remember that. I remember I laughed, I laughed at that situation. It might have been a difficult space and that overpowered any ability to, to even process the moment. So, so as we, as we put our energies into our own identity, we have to realize that we, we have to stop fighting everything that happened before us. We have to, we have to kind of draw that line and say, well, the, the situation with, Past family members, I cannot change, but I'm going to enter a state of wisdom and know how to make my life better, how to how to move forward and create an abundant relationship with kind of kind of drawing out all the positives and recognizing that I'm going to turn those negatives that are left over to make my life stronger as I move forward. So when and when and when we have any any internal resistance towards those moments. We actually become that energy. So you can you can fight your whole life resenting your parents, eventually being them, or you can you can fight you can be your whole life wanting to be your parents and still end up being them. There's two there's two things. If you fight against them, you'll be them. If you if you want to be them, you'll be them. Whereas if you if you turn around to them and took out those core principles, and even if you even if you sat down and, you, and your parents told you the proper story, you have to access the wisdom that is available for you to heal. And that is by saying that it's happened. I can't change it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to acknowledge their characteristics, their individuality, their personal knowledge. I'm going to bring it into my own life. And I'm going to um, know myself, what resonates with me, how I can how I can register the past and make a collective beauty for the future. And that is... Um, the, the transfer of energy is our life. It is it is every aspect that we learn. So if we if you if if the past is too much, start start close. Start by just conversations of respect. Start with how materialistic items. If you're if you're 
if you're hoarding loads of materialistic items and they have memories from the past, start by digesting those and then go back into your workspace. Are you are you kind of like charging a certain aspect of your life when you're in different spaces? And by registering this transfer of energy, you can slowly go back in time as an individual, as, as your empowerment, and start to tick the boxes and then healing. And, and then as you go back and if ever you go back, healing it becomes more natural. It comes in this innate ability just to identify. And that's all it, that's all it comes with the transfer of energy. So I'd start within your surroundings. I'd start with, with knowing your daily routines, the, the, the energies that you put onto items, the energies that you have in conversations, the energies that you kind of uh, transfer. Uh, it could be like your food. For example, if you're rushing your food, and you, you're trying to you're trying to be as productive as day, and you're not putting the the care and love and quality into making a meal and actually having a really healthy meal. That could be as simple as what happened when you were younger, but it's now now a dominant figure in your life, and you're not getting those the correct energies from your meal to your diet to your, to em- embracing your embodiment. And by looking at your daily routines, you can slowly work your way back in time to. To, to 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 respect the identity of your parents and that's what it's all about wow <laughs> i just need to take a pause for a moment and i'm i'm digesting this as you're saying it but i think there's a lot of work to do at least for me personally and i'm sure for listeners out there who I can identify with something um from their childhood that may have been traumatic um to pull from what you just said so I'm just giving myself a minute. Thank you. Um, and yeah, recognizing that there's work, there's definite work to be done there. Um, I want to talk about, okay. I, we've talked about individual trauma. I want to kind of zoom out and talk about, um, community and, um, politics a little bit. And, uh, specifically I want to touch on democracy because I, I believe you have some opinions about this and thoughts. Um, and so I guess what I'd like to start with is tips for finding and maintaining a community that respects your, um, collective beliefs of the universe. And then, and then maybe could we go to democracy after that? Absolutely. Yep. So, so, the, so community is isn't you. You don't go out searching for something that you think you may that may be healthy for you. You 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 put you 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 work on yourself and you find that you you'll start putting yourself in spaces that align with other people's values and other people's auras. So you you kind of it, it becomes this kind of simple procedure that your frequencies are calling for each other because you you're you're working on yourself you're putting you're putting the effort in and you're finding yourself in different spaces which you wouldn't normally be on and all of a sudden you're attracting these qualities and energies from others so so communities it's it's all part of the healing process and when you're when you're kind of healing and you're working on your 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 life and your health and your routines and stuff once you've once you've gone into uh, say for example you, you go to a couple of yoga classes and then you you kind of you get you kind of because you, so healing it, it, it's not awakening and going to the final state it's healing and then, and then you've got different pathways and then you probably probably cross about eight or nine different paths before you even get to the right stage that you go to so you find that you, you'll try a few a few exercises yoga then you'll breathe and work and then you might do a couple of classes for uh, expressive outlets like painting or you know, uh, playing sports or mm-hmm. just 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 walking and stuff like this. And as you as you start to build in your identity and what you like, you find that your intuition starts to kick in, and it kicks in in the, in the places that you you actually you are actually putting yourself in spaces with like minded people. And so we we can't force this. We can't force this situation. We have to look inwards to know that when we when we do eventually use our intuition to uh, to expand our consciousness and bring bring abundance into our life it'll put us in in situations where people will be attracted to us through our energy not through not through conversation if it could be obviously it could be through conversation, but it's normally through uh, literally a, it might be something as simple as a look and you put that then two people are put into a space and then that that's that's how you match with the frequencies in which that you're putting off so working on your identity working on your embodiment 
your your health, your routines, the plate, the spaces that you hold, the energies, your feelings. And then once you've gotten to a state of an intuitive, intuitive kind of direction, all of a sudden that your values start to align with other people's. And that's and that's a natural direction. That's not forced. That is an, that is an innate ability to be able to accept the situation for what it is. And then when you find those spaces, there's no judgment there. There's no, there's no kind of like aggressive, kind of passive aggressive like attitude. It's all done in empathy and it's all done in respect and values and love. So I, I would, if, if I say anything about community, I would say is your health and your embodiment is why you're here. Know the values of that. And then your community will follow. Mm. And, and that is that is and like I say, you might go to yoga class and have a couple of friends and that might help you move back onto a different path, and then back onto a and keep going, keep aligning yourself to the true value of what you want. So it, we, we should never force it and we should never kind of uh believe that this is the the the, the best direction, the only direction on and the truest direction for us. Allow those energies to collect and allow us to find that harmony within our world thank you that's helpful okay so democracy um and most forms of government as i understand it what you're saying here um doesn't offer the freedoms we think it does what what do you want to add to that what do you want to say about that so when we our the principle of life is the transfer of energy so the so when we when we look to healing our when we when we can find the true source it has the powers to heal it has the powers to tell you the truth and this is a this is actually a quite a long vision i think it was a, i think it was a meditation for an hour in this one and the, the foundations which democracy was built was under deceit back in um uh back in greece and the uh, the wealthier majority of the land, you know, they they the rest was slavery, and it was all done on money and wealth. And as the people rose up to to cl- to claim their voice, it was it was it was never a voice in which that under the terms in which it was set out. There was always this high power. There was always this high power that would control situations, which had the most money, which would uh, manipulate how how the voting went or had the last say in what they said so when we look to the that source and that the beginning of the the term democracy we can we only have to look at the world today and recognize that your vote potentially is already compromised depending on depending on money and the, the state of the economy because it's not the it's not democracy that runs the uh, runs the countries it is the most power, the most money within the economy so if 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 a politician generally goes to uh goes into a party and they need money they can quite easily get they they can quite easily get a sponsorship from a certain part of the economy but that drives their motives so that that doesn't recognize the individual and the people for their voting that drives their principles and what they want to implement within their reign and because we're such a short-sighted emotionally charged community it will only ever be for two years. So if you look at the economy, the economy only ever swaps around every two years. So when you vote and you think for voting for four years, potentially your principles could swap over several times before you even had the, had a chance to vote again. You know. So when 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 the, the 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 aura in which democracy was created was under deceit and under this kind of power grab from the lords and the individuals that had the money had the had the power and how that created so no matter no matter if you think it um democracy you get a vote it is it is never transparent to the way that what actually happens at the top it just changed the way that they operated within within that world and um when we when we create situations and create uh, uh, blessings in our life it is all on the foundations of how we create them. If you create, like, if you go in, out into your life and you and you create a moment of deceit, that moment will only ever be deceit, because it's the it's the start, it's the spark of that, it's the spark of that actual um, the transfer of energy. So, if um, yeah, so if if you kind of um, 
look at any aspect of life and and how the truth is hidden from you that means that the value that you think that you're putting in is only adding to a deceitful principles of how they operate and and it's and and it, and the 99 percent of the population has to say weak and in, and in within their boundaries for the one percent to achieve what they need so by you staying weak within your boundaries means that you don't get a voice anyway means that you you can only you can only earn this you can only achieve that you can you 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 are you're layered with a 30 year 40 year debt mortgage or whatever they are nowadays and that you 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 can't you can't actually progress to more than what you're allowed to achieve and accept within this life because that one percent has always been there and they always control that the way that the population works so d democracy is a deceit for the wealthy to get richer and that's that's the foundations it was created on so when you when you look to your healing and your own life you look at your friendships you look at your topics of communication your work and stuff like that and if you if you've if you've actually built these on deceit or kind of um, alternative motives or uh, agendas or narratives, that th they're only ever going to be that. They, they they will never change until that until that until that narrative collapses, and then the foundations are built back up again. Thank you. Uh, okay, so last topic I want to touch on it, it because I was reading about this in the book, and I I read I must have gone back and read this. I don't know, four or five times it, for me, it was like kind of a mind, mel not a mind meld. What is it? It was like, what I couldn't, I needed you to, I needed you here to explain it to me. <laughs> so here you are. Why our concept of equality disempowers our ability to think for ourselves. And so I want to be clear that I'm saying for listeners, why our concept of equality disempowers our ability to think for ourselves. It feels like a puzzle to me, I guess go ahead whatever so th this this is this is the this is the energetical imprint of the beginnings again so this is the this is the core principles and when we look at equal or the boundaries of equality we we look at the, the way that it started and when you look back they used to the, the term equal or the the foundations what it said was it used to be the era of slavery mm -hmm. so we look at we look at the energy that it created that momentum the energy in which it started so you might turn around and, and say uh, for that slavery, you, you get a, a boatload of slaves there. You will stop you for, uh, for for cows and chickens. That's the way it used to be, you know. So, so when we when we look at equality, we we categorize, we opinionate, and we put people in boundaries. So we uh, it might be sub brackets, or it might be sub brackets or sub brackets. What what you're actually doing is you're taking away the individuality of their identity, and put in put in a narrative that that fuels their their motive or their kind of the, the direction which they want to take so the best way to gain control categorize and put them in brackets and that's and that's how they used to do when that's that's how they've always done it so the start on which the, the loyalty and respect and love and empathy and all these foundational principles of life should should be within people's mindsets was taken away because they were taken away they were put in categorization and then and then they were um they had, they had lost their individual identity and you can see that within the workings of the planet today if anything that you anything that uh, involves control first they categorize then they de-identify and if you if you put yourself in a position of uh, thinking that you were equal you what you're saying is you're taking away uh, I, I, well, so, so I, I'm taking away your identity and your unique talents and your unique principles and 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 uh, your everything that you stand for and saying, well, that doesn't mean anything because we're just equal. Because if because the, and and the reason the reason why I say this and the foundation of the image I saw, we always look to nature to heal, right? Mm -hmm. So when you look out to nature, there is no energy that is equal; it is divinely balanced. So, so if you go out to nature and you say, "Oh, um, th 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 uh, uh, that's equal to equal," it's not. It, everything is unique. Every everyone has everything has its purpose, and everyone has its identity. If you, it's it's a logic based control profile that you think if that you're equal to someone else, you have no identity. And and we need this mindset needs to kind of it's it's part of our healing. It's part of our journey to actually becoming who we are. 
So, so the worst thing you can do is categorizing and being judgmental to people and thinking that they're equal when they're when they're not. They have their own life and we'll never be able to know their story. It's it's all down to them and and their journey. Thank you. That's that's um, okay. That makes sense and that's very helpful. I like that perspective, though. It's a, it's almost to me it feels like a shift from instead of saying equality, um, looking at balance rather and that everyone has their own individual um purpose and um characteristics and journey um dan it's been such a pleasure speaking with you i'm wondering if there's any you know if when people are picking up the book what you hope that they take away from it or if there's anything that you wanted to add that i didn't ask you um just just um message i just got just going back on to um the wording then when you said when you're looking at our terminology disempowers us so if we look at words like perfect perfect equal want need we can actively be draining our empowerment within that moment just by our terminology so it, it is important to bring your self-awareness to these principles and say well i'm going to do the right thing i'm going to be accountable for my life and i'm going to do I'm, I'm going to hold value i'm going to attract what i want so that's so that was just terminology um and for the book it, if if the individual wants guidance and stuff just for them to heal that's that's what it's there for uh there's there's, there's lots of things inside and there's it's all it's all down for the individual who reads it so yeah there are lots of things inside it's true it's very um yeah, it's it's a great book. I'm so glad that it crossed my path. I feel grateful to have gotten to speak with you today. Um, and then last final logistical detail is where can people go to find out more about you and connect with you? Um, I I have Instagram, which is a Sage's Journey. And then there's my website, sagesjourney.com. Great. And I'll make sure those links get into our show notes so that it, they're easily accessible. But Dan, thank you so much. Um, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. It's been a real pleasure speaking with you. Thank you. Well, everyone, that concludes another amazing episode of Outside the Studio. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I hope you learned something new, maybe remembered something old, maybe felt inspired to apply something to your life. My, <laughs> you can hear my dog in the background. She's doing a little happy dance. Um, so Daisy enjoyed it. Anyhow, I wanted to just pop in here to wrap us up to say a couple of things. Number one, I have such an amazing team that helps me put these podcasts together without them. I wouldn't, you know, be able to bring these amazing conversations to you. So thank you to my producer, my director of creative services, my sound editor, my um, engineer, consistency media don't know what i would do without you thank you thank you thank you and the amazing creation and artistic musical genius drew lovern thank you so much for putting together this music for specifically for outside the studio so unique to the show only place you're ever going to hear it is right here Thanks, you guys. You make my world go around. Stay well, everyone. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. Share on the socials, especially if it's a show that you think, hey, this could help somebody else. That's what this is all about, right? We're sharing information so that we're better, um, so that we're inspired, so that we're lifting each other up, and we're learning how to be in this world, living on this planet, to the best of our ability, sharing information and inspiring one another. And that's my hope. That's my hope for the show. Take care.